Welcome to another episode of 507 Garage. In this episode, we're going to be inside the house. I'm going to be showing you uh, one of the scans that I'll be making is uh, for one of the sponsors that I'm working with. So I just need to scan a couple products or scan a couple items, car parts, and then send it to them. That way they can confirm as well as validate like fitment and things like that. So you'll see how this Einstar um, uh, shining 3D scanner works and see what I see um, when I'm making the scans and um, using things like meshing and things like that. So I'll try to use a little bit of that just to kind of show you guys how it works because this is what is going to be helping me in, in the current build. We're going to be scanning a lot of parts, sending it to vendors that are not here in Minnesota that I'm working with, sponsors that I'm working with, and that way we collaborate, get the parts not only made, but also in some in, in instances we're validating fitment just to make sure everything fits right um, per the model that they have, per the scans I have, before they make the product and send it to me. So stay stay tuned. So the computer right. that I'm using, I'm actually using a laptop. I mean, some people tend to have a mobile desktop just because uh, it has to be a really powerful computer that you use just so you can do all the processing and meshing and it kind of works a little faster. I'm using uh, a MacBook Pro for which I have um, Boot Camp Assistant uh, running Windows 10. The computer, this, this laptop here has 32 gigs of RAM, but um, we bought this Einstar Shining 3D from a distributor by the name of Umax. And they provide you a document that basically says what you should use as a uh, type of hardware or the requirements that you will need. As you can see, it says Windows 10 or 11 64 bit. It says a display card of similar specs or higher than an NVIDIA GTX 1060 um, or an NVIDIA RTX series. Memory or display memory should be six gigabits or more. Processor, uh, I, uh, Intel, Intel Core i7-11-8000H or higher. And then system memory is 32 gigabytes or more. And it should have a USB 2, uh, 2.0 or above. This one I'm using, this MacBook Pro. This one has just Thunderbolt uh, ports everywhere. So I ended up having to use an adapter. Um, I got one off of Target. So this is the adapter I'm using. The adapter a little better. But this is a Phillips adapter, and then it converts to a regular USB. Um, and then one of the things you wanna do if you're running a laptop, you wanna make sure that you have it plugged in at all times. This will use a lot of energy. The Einstar comes with its own power supply, and it connects, it connects to, your, um, to your Einstar scanner through this, so it still provides some power to your Einstar. Your Einstar uses a really nice connector. I think it's like a six pin or seven pin connector. I will have to get the specs for it. But yeah, here's the scanner, has three cameras, has lights. Um, so it helps for when you're scanning items uh, and it's in, in proper lighting, it's not um, your what you have to help you. It can just use the light to provide light itself. You have buttons in the back, <clears throat> the middle button. It's a button for you to start. This is to zoom out, zoom in. Um, and then some of these buttons have other other uses while you're scanning as well. So it's really useful, especially when you wanna start a scan and you're ready to go. You can just press it here instead of having to walk back to the computer and do it. Um, if you remember like the Nintendo Wii has a little strap. This is to make sure that you don't drop this. Um, Cause it is, it has some weight to it and your arms, arms can easily get tired as you're using it, so. I have to refresh so it can actually detect the scanner. So there. And then I select new project. Um, in this case, I'll go and select new project. I name the project and I'll just put flex plate or 1UZ flex plate. And since I want it to be in the same group that I already have, I'll put it in the folder for 1UZ. And then I'll name it 1UZ Flexplate.
All right, and then it asks you what you want to use for scanning. It's kind of far, so I'll have a closer view later, but I'll hit apply, and then it sets everything. <clears throat> I have already calibrated this scanner since I've been scanning since yesterday when I got it. So once you're ready, you press the middle button, the scanner will then give you a preview so you can see what you're scanning, surface areas, things like that. And when you press it again, that's when you start scanning. So we've taken the scan of this. Let's see if it captured what I wanted. So you can see that it has captured the top of it. These are the generate cloud, uh, generate point clouds. And this basically takes all of the data that you scanned and it creates points. looks like now and you can see I think now that it scanned it or showed it like this it looks a little better so if I can confirm that these holes are where they need to be then I won't need to scan again I can see if maybe this we need the teeth in there but I don't know that we need the teeth of of the of, of, of the flywheel I think I can leave it like that um, just because we just need the profile of the flywheel um, with the vendor that I'm working with or the sponsor that I'm working with. We just need the profile, he needed the holes. Uh, so I'm guessing he can do without the holes. Um, even though you can't see through them like you can here, uh, I think he can get that information. So the next thing I do is I run a mesh model and it gives you a bunch of different parameters. Here it tells you underwater type model, semi water type model, and then water type model. I will have to look at what these mean. I'm just following the, the, the steps taken on the video I watched. So I'll try to do some more explanation later uh, on this video um, or on a different one in regards to what that means. But I'm just gonna leave the parameters as is. So I'm gonna just hit apply. I'll send this out and see if that works. So now I will save the scan, save. I'll keep the specs as it is. So this is day two of scanning. Um, I updated or at least worked on the video up to this point as I was editing and working with um, the sponsor that I'm working with came to realize that I was doing something wrong with my scans. So when I'm doing the meshing, there are three options. You have unwatertight, semi-watertight, and then watertight. Well, for what I need to send them, I need to select unwatertight. So that means that the algorithm within the software is not gonna add any hole or it's not gonna fill any holes within what I've scanned. When you do semi-watertight, it's gonna half fill holes and when you do watertight it's going to fill any holes that are in the in the scan so for what i'm scanning which is this flywheel i need to select unwatertight that way whatever data has been selected from the scan is going to use that and it's going to keep the holes where they're wherever they're at so i'll show you some examples all right so as i was mentioning i realized a couple of mistakes that i made uh, yesterday in regards of scanning. So when you scan, there are a couple different scanning options. So let me go and show you what those are. So if I decide to add 
another project to the specific group. And I select add. <clears throat> you have the different, you have four types of scanning. You have features, which is what I had before. That's why when I scan, it gives me the scan in colors. You have, let's start from the top actually. So scan mode, you have portrait and then object. I'm selecting object because I'm not scanning a person uh, or a portrait or picture or something like that. So I'm scanning a, an object, so that's why I have object. For size, I have medium and large object. You also have option of small. So I left it at medium because I believe the item fits in between the medium and large. But here's where I made the mistake, right? So the select mode, um, of alignment is features, texture alignment, hybrid, which is features and markers or global markers. So I selected hybrid alignment and that uses a mixture of the features and the markers here. So what I need to do, um, well this scan already, the scan that, I'm, that I have already in the background has already been scanned with this setting. So if I'm gonna scan a second item that I'm going to then align and put together, um, it's going to keep the same type of scan. So what I will do is I'm actually gonna get out of this one. Before I do, I just wanna show you that it shows the holes here, but you see how it kinda uh, fills them in in certain spots like this. We'll try the texture scan and we'll go from there and it should have the holes uh, represented here better. All right, so I already created the new project. I'm calling it 1UZ Flex Plate 3 since I've already done several of the other ones. So I'll select Texture Alignment. I'll keep the resolution at its highest point, which is the dot two, and then I'll hit Apply. So now we're ready for a new scan. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move back to where the flywheel is. I've selected a new prop that holds the flywheel so we can make sure that the holes are represented. So when the scanner goes through the top of the flywheel, there's nothing right below it that it will scan and somehow miss the holes that are there. So now I'll show you what I mean by the prop I'm using. So this is a candle that I got for my birthday. This is um, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, one of my favorite bands. So, if you look at this candle prop, it's, it fits perfectly in there. So I have um, the opening, it's not blocked by anything. Before I was using a table uh, phone or camera holder, and, in, and it was just, you could really see it right in the middle here. So the way I'm doing it is that you can't see anything. So when I scan, at the top of this flywheel, it doesn't really show uh, anything right behind it. I maybe could put something here to make this space dark, but I'll leave it like this um, to see how the scanner does. So the feature that I said I selected uh, on this scan, which is why I deleted the previous scan is, I selected this data quality indicator. So what it does is that as you scan and it's collecting data, the areas that are green, that means it has really good data on them. And if you see the outsides or the holes that are here, that's where it doesn't have enough data or just didn't get a good amount of data. So I wanted to get as most of it to be green as possible. Um, so if you see there is data on the bottom, down here, but because it's so much lower due to where the actual candle starts, I can actually take that off. So I'll just do the lasso. All right, here we go. So there, so then I can delete that. I can again use the lasso and get rid, rid of the rest of those things there. I will hit apply. All right, so what I'll do now is I will actually do the optimizing and generation points. Um, there's two, there's the gener generate point clouds, 
or optimizing engineering point clouds. I'm gonna choose that one, I'll keep the standard one and then I'll just click to generate the scanning points. All right, let's see. Yeah, so it looks like there's holes in there. Hopefully, all of them. Let me rotate it and see. Yeah, it looks like it has holes in all of them. So meshing is next. And what I have is unwater tight, so I don't want any holes to be filled. Filter. I'm going to select none. And I'm just going to keep the only feature is max triangles. I'll hit apply and see how, how that goes. All right, so I took all the settings off and it looks like once I changed the settings to uh, hide or show texture. So in this moment, I want the texture to be hid and it just gives me uh, this in blue. It looks like all of the holes are showing. So I will save this and I will send this out. And I believe this should allow them to get um, Hopefully, allows them to get the specs that they need so they can measure PCD uh, for these mounting uh, bolts here uh, for the one UZ flywheel. Please like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time we have new videos. And as I get more and more familiar with this 3D scanner, you guys will see more stuff come up.